going to make this dolly for this piece of equipment.
This is the dolly for the belt sander. A table sander, really. We're going to mount wheels on it. I have a four inch neoprene wheel. The swivels. Has a lock. There's four of them. All four swivel. All four have locks. You'd be tempted to, when you put it in there, just sort of stick it in the middle. But bad experience has taught me when you do that, yeah, you can put the brake on, but you can't take the brake off. The way this wheel works is when you step down on this. pinches it down here and then it won't move but to shut it off you have to step on it here so if you stick it in the middle yeah you can put it on but you can't get it off because you can't get your toe under there so what we have to do is stick it right on the edge makes it just a little bit hairy but you can see it gives you clearance to shut that to turn the brake off okay like I was saying we're going to mount the wheels we're gonna use these little lag bolts here it's important when selecting your your lag bolts that it goes through the hole comfortably but the big thing is, and I learned this the hard way, is you don't want your head to extend past it where it will hit and interfere and it really is uncomfortable. So we're going to pre-drill. Best way to figure out how to pre-drill is you buy one of these things. I don't know if you can see it or not, but... It's all it's a it's a thing that tells you how big the holes are. Going from a half inch down to one sixteenth. With this type of a bolt, you want to drill a hole that is the size of the shaft, not the th outside threads, but the size of the shaft. The best way to figure out what size hole you need is you start screwing this thing in. Into your holes. Now, if you can get it to where it screws in, all right, this one's just a little loose. That's a uh, 1664th. The next size down is a quarter inch. And that just about screws in there. I could make it go, but I don't want to ruin my gauge. So I'm going to drill pilot holes for a quarter inch. All right, most people tell you that uh, you should mark each hole. And when you mark it, you want to mark around the hole. You want to go all the way to the outside. Let's see. Well, that's blurry. So remove the wheel. What I do is put my wood drill in here, it's a quarter inch bit, drill straight down, nice and easy. You only need to go the length of the, the bolt. And then I go ahead and I put the bolt in and I screw it tight. taken and uh, marked all four holes before and yeah sometimes it works but sometimes if you like scotch over just a little bit when the drill hits the grain it'll move 
what happens is, is your bolts won't line up. So I just take and put one bolt in. Drill my next hole. Put the second bolt in. That holds it nice and straight. Now the wheel's really straight. And when you tighten the lag bolts, wood bolts, whatever, they can take a pretty fair amount of tension, but you want to make be careful that you don't over tighten them because you'll strip out the wood. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and drill my last two holes. And the beauty of a swivel wheel is it moves out of the way. If this was a fixed wheel, I wouldn't be able to do that. And you would, in fact, have to draw or outline the holes pre-drill. I'm going to clear off the chips. Up to the last hole, and again, drill them in. There you go. I'm using four swivel wheels on this piece. That way it's not steerable, it goes the way I want. If you were using a fixed wheel, that means it doesn't swivel. And you had two, the thing you have to worry about is that the wheels would be parallel. Because if you have it crooked, one crooked and one straight, it's not going to roll correctly. So you really want to make sure if you install one of these uh, fixed wheels with two fit other ones, and you want to make sure that the wheels are parallel so that it rolls proper. Put your wheels on all four corners and you're ready to go. Okay, I got all four wheels mounted. Um, took about, I don't know, 10 minutes. When you put dolly wheels on it, when you put dolly wheels or wheels on your dolly, this is going to support a very heavy piece of equipment. Trust me, you want to Make sure you get a good quality wheel. This chop saw station I made a while back, um, it's pretty heavy. The saws are heavy. That belt sand is very heavy. Well, when I first built it, I put a real crappy, cheap little wheel on it. it wouldn't roll for crap. I ended up having to strip it all apart and putting a good heavy duty neoprene wheel on it. Same thing for this. Uh, it's a wood buggy. Same thing for this table. Good heavy duty quality wheel. This type of wheel. This here is a uh, leftover um, stair part, a uh, newel post that I took and made into a work table. Well, it wouldn't accommodate your the flat part, so I had to use a wheel with a spindle. And that meant that the wheel was not available for a brake. So what I did to make a brake was is I took these little got these little pins, these little clip pins. And I took the wheel before I installed it. And I drilled a hole in the metal part and then four holes in the wheel itself. And then that way there, all I gotta do is move the wheel. Of course, it's difficult with one hand. Put the, and then it slides all the way through. And then that locks the, the table. The wheel won't move. And then, of course, for storage, I put these things up here. Alright, that's it for installing the okay, wheel. Okay, so here's our dolly completed. 
as you can see, rolls very nicely. It's uh, 44 inches by 44 inches. Here's the brake. You step on that to lock the wheel. We'll do the other one. Hold still, goddammit. There, now the, just two wheels are locked, see, and it won't go anywhere. Unless you really, you know, mash it. To shut it off, you have to push that tab back up. This is going to be a challenge with one hand. There you go. That's why you got to put it out to the edge so you can shut the brake off.